Well, hi, good morning. Thank you for joining me and my cat Shadow in my shop here for another day at this radio. Uh, I think given the fact that I aligned one band uh, yesterday, um, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test the uh, vacuum tubes in the radio. And my plan here is to test them, find any that are weak, identify the ones if there are any that are weak, put them all the originals back in the radio, run the radio, get some kind of quantitative assessment of how well it's working, and then get rid of the weak tubes by replacing them with stronger tubes, and then see what effect that's had on the radio. That's my first, uh, that's my first step. I've got my cat here to help me. It's fantastic. So I'm going to do all that off camera, I think, because tube testing is a little bit dry. I know, I know some of you like watching that, but I'm just going to do it off camera here and get it done. Well, I've saved the thrilling part to go on the video. So here's the first SK, uh, 6SK7, which is the RF tube. First RF tube no shorts. This tube should come up to 1520. Should, should be above where my finger is or it's rejection time. Okay, well it's, it's well above. Okay, that's the first 6SK7. Just gonna leave the camera running here because the there's another 6SK7. Sure, what all that crackling is. 6SK7. Come in. Just give them a moment to warm up. Okay, looking for shorts. None. It's normal for the pointer to come up like that. Okay, ready for the test again. Same thing, 1520. Mm hmm still warming up a bit so this one is uh, you know if I really follow what this machine is suggesting this tube is ready for rejection it's actually slightly below 1520 or, or at the very best it's right at 1520 okay so that's the IF amplifier that's a very very important tube that, that one look it's going back down now Oop. jumping around a bit it could be house voltage going up and down and things like that. So we have a weak IF amplifier tube. That would that's that's definitely a potential to weaken the radio. Let's do the others too. Okay, this next tube is a six SA seven. Just double check here. Two nine L. Two seven three four five two seven three four five sixteen fifty C forty four forty five actually and the bias is nine out. We're ready to go. So this is the mixer tube, or sometimes called the first detector tube, and this one should to pass it has to be above 1100 which is about here so that that's pretty good that, that looks like a pretty strong tube to me great next one okay this next tube is the 6sq7 <clears throat> this guy has got two diodes inside and one triode <clears throat> excuse me, amplifier. Pretty important tube. Uh, I mean, all these tubes are important, of course. None of them are in there for fun. Okay, so no shorts. This tube should show up at 760. So if it, does, it can't get above 760, about here. It's a bad guy. This is the... Uh, triode we're checking right now oh 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 <clears throat> okay let me just double check my settings here and make sure they're correct whenever I get a bad uh, tube reading I think it's, it's wise to kind of 
go over the settings and just make sure that uh, I'm not making some kind of dumb mistake here. Let's see. 6 SQ7, so 6.3 voltage, one signal level, 18L for the bias setting, 25100, 25100, 3760, 3760, 37 sensitivity, F on the plate, that's it, 760, try it, try it again, 760 is up about here. Oh. Wow, okay, this one is definitely bad. This is a bad tube. This would result in low output. You have to crank the volume high to get good audio. We might as well check the diodes on this too. Okay, so all that matters now are these settings. I'm going to pull the tube out while I change them. 2013P. 2013P. 0760. 0760 48 and then we flip this to A I don't think you want to be turning this while you've got a tube in in this tester so we're going to now there's two diodes in here to test okay we'll let it warm up again so we found a, a questionable IF amplifier a very weak audio preamplifier. Probably, you know, there's a good chance that this is weak because the cathode is weak. And I think it's the same cathode for the diodes. So we might find the diodes weak. On this tester, diodes have to come up past, past here. Where it says diodes OK. So I have a special button to flip here for diodes. We're all set. Oh, yeah, so this is a worn out tube for sure. The other diode, they're all showing up. And the whole thing is bad. It's a bad, bad tube. Six SQ7. Okay, that's that's two now. That aren't aren't too good. So this next tube is the output tube, a 6K6, but the radio is actually built for a 6F6. And a 6K6 is not the best uh, substitute tube. 6V6 would probably be better. A 6F6 would probably be the best, of course, the one that's built for, but I think those are a little rare. I have many, many 6V, 6K, 6W, 6s. So we'll do a little experimenting once the rest of the radio is kind of up to snuff. We'll try a different tube other than this one. But for now, it's a good idea to test this tube. Okay, let's put to this view here. Okay, no shorts. For this tube, to make us happy, this reading has to be above 1360. So 1360 being... 12, 13, right up in this area, just a little bit below halfway. What do you say, tube? Yeah, this guy's happy. So I don't think this would cause any problems in the radio itself, except it's not it's not really the right tube to have in there. Okay, so the next step is to get the radio to get the microphones turned on. That's the next step. Okay, so the next step is to uh, fire up the radio, feed it a, a uh, reliable signal, I use a signal generator to do it, measure in some quantitative way how well it's working. I could look at volume coming out of the speaker, I could look at AVC voltage if I care to. Um, because the trouble tubes are in the radio part of the radio and not in the audio part, um, oh that's not really true is it? Because yeah, that's not that's not really true. So I think probably monitoring the output volume is really the best way to, to judge this radio. Set it up, get it warmed up, get it tuned in, make the measurement, and then we'll start switching the tubes around and see uh, see what kind of improvement really comes.
Okay, so here's a, a possible replacement, 6SK7 tube. Somebody put a lot of uh, ink on the top of it here. Here we go. This should read 1520 about here. Something not right there. Let me just check. A quick change here. I probably made a mistake. 17251. 17251. 4630. 44C. Why'd you get a reading like that? Six SK seven signal level two. Oh, that might have been the problem there. Doubt it. Signal level two, ten L seventeen seven two five one forty six thirty. Okay, that's more like it. So that that's way above the pass point. That's almost like a new tube there. So that's our that's our good six SK seven. We'll go in for the. Uh, I have amplifier. And the next two I'm going to check is a 6SQ7. I'm just going to stop here for a sec. Okay, here's a possible 6SQ7. No shorts. If there was a short, this meter would, would come up. And we could read the value right on this scale here 500k, 200k, would give us the resistance. Okay, this tube should test above 760. We're right about, that yeah, would be right about there. There we are. Very good. So I have two good replacement tubes. We might as well check the diodes here too. Why don't we do that? Let's go out. 2013P. 2013P. 2013P, 2013P, 0760, 0760. Sorry, you're just staring at this while I'm doing this. 48 sensitivity, I'm just trying to be quick. A on the plate, pop it in. So this is going to be the diode check, so it only has to come above the diode line there where it says diodes. Okay, here we go. Diodes okay, plate two. So one one shows a, a touch, well no, about the same, eh? Well, one's a little higher than the other, but I don't think that really matters. There we go. Very good. 6SQ7. Okay, a little noisy in here. I've made up a chart on this page. I'm going to fill out as I try the different combinations of new and old tubes. First thing is, what signal strength do we get with two old, the two old original tubes in there? It's on this meter. Let me tune the radio. Be absolutely sure it's on the money here. Okay, things have been running long enough to be to be warmed up pretty good. So I make that out to be minus nine decibels. Both old tubes, minus nine. As long as I've left room for the meter to go up. So we're gonna change first of all the six SQ seven. This is the new one. This is the old one. I can't even touch it already. Already too hot. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little on edge doing this, sure. I did some funny sounds there just as it was coming out. Okay, we'll put in the new one. Let's 
see what we get. Hello, hello. This is what we get. I stick the right tube in there? Have I done something stupid? I did do something stupid. I've done something stupid. Something stupid's been done. <laughs> stupid, stupid. So what we learned here is if you replace a 6SA7 with a 6SQ7, the radio doesn't work. Wow, lucky break there. Dumb. Dum, da, dum, dum, dum. This is where I have to decide now. Do I post this? Yeah, I always post these stupid mistakes because I think I get a laugh out of it. I think everybody gets a laugh out of it. So, <laughs> Okay, let's try the right one now. Better wait for the radio. Let's wait for the radio to come back. It's not going to come back. I turned it off. <laughs> yeah, so this is typical of experiments in my shop. I would hope real scientists do a little better job on their experiments than I do on mine. Yeah, like for instance, if I was telling you the vaccine is thumbs up, I've tested it. <laughs> I don't know if you should believe me. What's happened? I hear it a bit. That's an interesting experiment in itself. Assumably I didn't blow anything out of the radio when I did that. I'm going to wiggle that tube a little bit. Hmm. So I think that was a retuning of the radio. Let's try. We're not going to get the same output. Well, there is a problem in the world of science called the reproducibility problem. And I don't know if you've read up on it, but you probably should. I'm going to find out that an awful lot of scientific experiments, especially in the social sciences, cannot be replicated. Which puts a big question mark on an awful lot of social science science. Yeah, reproducibility crisis, I think is what it's commonly called. Read up on it. Okay, what am I going to do now? Um, I can up the volume. I can up the signal strength. Let's just try tuning the radio chain. That might be good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Just pulling the tube out and putting it back in. And you get a difference. How am I going to claim anything after this? Uh, I should, I should, I should, uh, I can make the meter more sensitive, but I think I have trouble. It's getting really sensitive down here. I'm absolutely sure that it's the signal we're hearing and not the noise that's driving this. So I'm going to up the uh, modulation a bit. Yeah, so it's quite, quite clear what that is. Okay, we're, we're good to go here, except this is up too high now. So I'm going to turn down the volume to, to lower that. That's a little more pleasant in the shop here. How stable is it? Okay, so, okay, now we have a whole new... <laughs> look at it go around. Yeah, this is quite, quite the science going on here. Um, I'm listening to see if I can actually hear that change. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of confirmation bias is staring at that meter. Okay, tuning again. spot. Okay, let's write that number down. Now it's minus six. Both old tubes minus six dB on the meter with everything set the way it is. And I'll now try to pull out this uh, the correct tube. <laughs> hey, why don't, why don't we do the IF tube? 
it's a little easier to get at. I have to here. Hop one out, cold one in. Hey, what's that meter doing up there? Okay, tube in. What's that meter doing up there? Well, it's just a dramatic difference here, obviously. Very dramatic difference. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I moved my meter. You saw what I did? I don't know if my hand really showed up there. I just changed scale and changed it back. I ended up with the same reading. This is with uh, the 6SK7 changed only. Six. It's actually minus 7, it's actually a touch lower. Sounds exactly the same to me, kind of. The noise and the signal level doesn't sound much different at all. Surprising stuff. Okay, I'm gonna do the uh, do the the six SQ. Ouch! Ouch! Six SQ. There we go. We're watching uh, TV ads, and they come on, and they go, uh, uh, you know, this this product improves the situation, forty nine point five percent. I always think, come on, 0.5 percent. How can you, forty nine point five? One time we did the test, we got forty nine point five, and that's the one we're going to tell you about because all the rest we don't think we. Have. Well, that looks a little better. The old 6SQ7 was quite weak. Now, the thing about the IF2 is there's an automatic volume control system. So if the IF2, you know, changing it uh, creates more IF signal, the ABC is going to work at cutting that back. That would be, be my understanding of it. What you should get out of that is a better signal to noise ratio. The same volume, but the noise should be down. Didn't seem to happen. Is that, that's because I. Uh, that's because I changed the wrong tube again? <laughs> I don't think so. We have a good tube here and a bad one there. This tube's hot, don't touch it. Well, we got some improvement anyway, and we know we got good tubes in the set now. And carry on with all the alignment work and uh, throw my chart away here it doesn't mean anything <laughs> how many times tuning no, this shouldn't affect the tuning at all how many times have I set out to do some kind of qualitative test in here and it's just completely flopped <laughs> it's just about just about every time, I think. So, okay, that's why I always say, if my doctor comes back and goes, the test results are this, you better take this drug for the rest of your life, I'd say, let's repeat the test before I commit myself to a lifelong tour of uh, taking some drug. Because, uh, you know, mistakes get made. How do you know the lab is uh, doing things absolutely precisely? Why should anybody trust those lab results on the face of it? You're not allowed to go in the lab and watch them being done. You wouldn't understand anyway what they were doing. Don't know where the problems could lie in the tests they do. They just come back and they give you, you know, the doctor gets a sheet of numbers and you just read the numbers. Fine until they tell you do this for the rest of your life, I think. Okay. Uh... 
I think we should just carry on with the rest of the alignment uh, process. It's fairly involved still. If I get through one more band or a couple more bands today, that's good. Maybe we can do all the bands and leave the uh, AM band for tomorrow. That might be a way of doing it. I shuffle through all these pieces of paper looking for the instructions. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. That's a good idea. Work my way through uh, all these steps down to where we start on the A band here. So we'll just we'll just stick with these. Not a lot of steps. Good. Okay. First thing I have to do here is recalibrate the camera position. Is it a little bit of parallax that could be here? Because I moved the camera to take those shots of the tube tester. So it's right on the money. Perfect. Perfect. Now, let's just see what are we supposed to do next. Get on the right band, that's for sure. So we've done the the 16 to 13 meter band. Now we're going to do the 19 meter band, 15 megahertz. So we're going to want a signal at 15.8 megahertz coming from here. Okay, it's about 15.8 there. And we want to flip back to the 19 band. There we are. A little bit of volume. Okay. And then we want to tune the radio to 94 degrees. 94 degrees. Okay. It's about the middle of the band is where this is going. It's 90, 94. Okay, that's 94 degrees. Yep. I'm just trying to force myself to double check things that you can't, it seems like you can't double check them really. I mean, I'm just right there. I'm still trying to force myself to do that. And we're not hearing it, so let's dial in. Let's find out where it is. Hello, hello, hello. Uh-oh. Okay, something terrible is going wrong. First, let me check to make sure I'm on the band. I think, I think I'm on, I think I'm on. 19, oops, 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 sorry about that. 19 meter band. 19 meter band. Just That's definitely 15 mega, height, mega heights. <laughs> I'm drinking my coffee too fast this morning. That's what's happening here. So we got 15 mega heights here. We should be tuned to 15.8 at 94 degrees. 15.8. Is it? Is it just so weak? Oh my gosh! It's just not even there. Non-existent. What's going on? Non you know, I know why it's non-existent. Can't you see? <laughs> Here's the connections. Okay, fooled by the ones on the radio. That's the antenna. Let's put on the signal generator. I'll turn this down so we don't get blasted. Okay, back up. Still at 94 degrees, so we should be hearing this at 15.8. Too strong a signal. 15, 15.8. Come on. Didn't I resolve everything? Fifteen point five. If the local oscillator is above fifteen point five, means the local oscillator is at fifteen 
950, 16.3. So I should hear something at 16.3. I should be able to sneak something into the radio. Around 16.3. There it is. Okay. And you can tell this, this is just a little bit louder. So making sure, I'm, again, I'm not tuning it up on the image signal. The local oscillator certainly appears to be above in this radio above the target frequency okay L13 is what we're after L13 L13 and it says 15 2 15.8 15.8 at 94. 15.2. Um, well, what's 94 pointing at? I, I, I have to think that this is correct here. This is what, if you dial it up to 94 degrees, you get 15.8. And look at look at what's coming up. 15.4. 15.2. There's <laughs> too many too many numbers here. Well, I don't know what's going on with this chart, but it doesn't seem to be correct in many cases. So we'll assume L13 is correct, and that is L13 here, and we'll uh, we'll use it so that. Get it wrong now. 15.8 is what we're hearing at 94 degrees. 15.8. Wow, they're really just giving you way too many ways to get get things wrong here. We'll be in here. There we are. Okay, let's see if we can turn it. It's affecting the radio, so we know it's correct. So we want to get this to 15.8. Okay, so I'm going to advance this in the direction I want to go. I'm going to turn this to find it. Okay, so this is the way we're going. So we go by quite a ways. Go by. Set this now to 15.8. Oh, oops, a little more volume. That's a fairly strong signal I'm sending to this. Is it? Is it? Is it really? Is it really? Well, not so strong. Yeah, it is. That's a thousand times. This was around five micro volts, so five thousand micro volts. That's a hefty signal being sent to the radio. Most of these radios are sensitive down to. 20 microvolts and things like that. I don't know if it says anywhere here what its sensitivity should be. Probably doesn't. Okay, that's good enough though. We're at 15.8, 94. We, we never move that. It's still at 94. So we'll call this done. There's nothing else to adjust. Is that right? One adjustment. So now we go to the 25 meter band, 99 degrees, roughly in the middle again. 25 meter band. We set the dial to 99 degrees. 99 
99. Let me turn it down here. Okay, 99 degrees. It'd be a nice summer day in Florida, wouldn't it? Okay, it'd be a nice winter day too. And now the frequency we're shooting for is 11.8. Okay, dial down there. Here and here we go again. Okay, 25 meter band. This has to be 25 meter band. How can it not be? Because I turned the dial the wrong way. That's how I know. Dork. What a dork, eh? <laughs> there we go. Okay. See so the radio got a lot louder. Now we'll see if we're 11.8 11, 11 shows up here. Wow, look at that. Well, we're just not going to get any more accurate than that. That's curious. Oh my gosh, you've been staring at that dial all this time. Whoops, sorry about that. Apologize very much for that. Not that you really missed much. So, there we are. So this one is lined right on the money. Okay, we'll go to the next band. Let me make sure I'm going to the next band. That's the next band. I'm just going to check here because I tend to get things messed up. Okay. I've been hanging around with myself for quite a while. Um, three, we're going to do three things now on the 31 meter band. All done at 9.55 or 73 degrees. So we'll go for 73 degrees. I'll try to remember to switch the camera back after we get there. 73 degrees. That's 73 degrees. Hey, switch the camera back. So, and the frequency we're shooting for is 955. Okay, 955. Well, that's just about the bottom of the range of my generator here. So it's a little out. So we're gonna, now what do we need to adjust? Funny that one band was dead on and the others aren't. Isn't that funny? Funny, funny. So at this point we do, without touching anything, we do all these L15, C17, and C8. So L15 is first, L15 is this one, L15 is this one, and um, So we want to go down to 955. Find it. There we go. Okay, set this to 955. Okay, the next thing to tune is after L15 is C17, C17 is this, this guy is hard to get to because it's, it's because of the, uh, it's up in here. up behind the rectifier tube, right in the middle of the radio, right under all this stuff here. How am I going to get in there and do that? And, uh, what did I do with my special tool? Here it is. I want this to come down. It's got to come all the way down to there, which means this whole apparatus is going to interfere. 
with getting there. Uh-huh. And it may even be locked. I'm going to have to put a wrench on it and unlock it. It looks locked. I'm going to get in there and work hard on it. And just pull all the buttons back out of the way. And how far back do you have to go? Or go forward. Forward sounds better. Forward. Forward. So to go forward. Might be enough. Get in there on an angle. Yeah, okay. Now, can we even turn this? Or is it locked? Oh, it's locked. Everything we need almost like a special tool to go down on that thing. time I got a grip with this great big thing. I don't think I'm going to get that in there. Okay, we're going to have to shut the power. Pull out the rectifier tube, which is burning hot by now. Burn your fingers off. Burn your fingers off. The reason the uh, rectifier tube is so hot, it gets so hot, so much hotter than these other ones, they all get, they all get pretty hot, is because it, it needs to convey a lot of current. And it needs the very hot filament to, uh, to, to supply enough electrons for the current. I can't even grab it with like this. How can I get in there? Crazy thing. was hot. Okay, now let me see if I can get at that thing. It really would much better with a socket that would go down on it and uh, Rather than what I'm doing. I don't know, did it turn? Did it turn at all? I get the feeling this is just not doing the trick here. I gotta come up with a better way of doing this. Okay, I got totally sidetracked by a phone call, but I'm back. So I found this will fit, but there's no way I can put the usual tool in to it. So let's see if I can just get a grip on it now. This is even harder to grip. Leave this one alone in the end. actually not gripping that's why that's baloney that was baloney oh my gosh I don't know I mean just have to leave this one just as it is I mean chances are it's pretty good considering how hard it is to get in there and make it not good no 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 
thought it would be a quarter. I'm not so sure that's too small. Yeah, maybe we're going to skip this adjustment here. I don't like doing that. Maybe I get a, now I got these tubes out of the way, maybe I can get a grip on it. Radio's turning. Hey, I turned it. Yeah, okay, that's it, I got it. Very good. Let's put these tubes back in. There we go. Oh, this is all knocked asunder. Everything got this. Yeah. Well, I still have to get a tool in there. Okay, so if I can turn it, I can pull it up and down. Okay, well, where am I at here? I gotta turn the radio back on. And. Yeah. I just got totally thrown off. Like, phone call. Okay, radio back on, and then we set it to the proper frequency. Well, yeah, something like that. So, if you want to have an uplifting experience while watching television, I would recommend the NASA channel, NASA, N-A-S-A, -A, channel on TV, which we get, which, which I get here in Canada. And uh, I flip that on. Sometimes it's a little dry, but uh, mostly you're watching human beings doing wonderful, exciting things, and it's all real. And I really like that. So uh, NASA Channel. That's how I get my. That's how I charge up. So I try to stay clear of the discharging shows. It's too many of those. Well, it's making sound. Seems stable already. Let's put a little more volume. Okay, meters up. Tune it to get it right on the money. Should I? No, I should not. I should make sure using the camera. But it's going to be a little tricky. I think I think because I calibrated the camera, but since then things have happened. This is supposed to be at 73. The camera just moves a little bit. We'll have to move a long ways to get there. Yeah, it's not much parallax here. Not as much as I uh, was concerned about. So the camera's in the right position. Ah, I gotta check it. I see what's happened. And I, uh, that's the tone control chip, not the volume. When I when I drop this this wire, this is the light wire for the light bulb. I drop it right onto the pointer. Okay, that's not bad. That's good. Just took that off and we're back in business. 73. Right? Yes, 73 is 9.55. You can hear the uh, radio quiet as we get close to the station. Close to the signal generator. 73. 73, was that the number of trombones? Is it 76 trombones? I think it's 76 trombones. Okay. This is a fairly strong signal being sent over to this radio again. Hmm. It doesn't seem very sensitive, but we won't worry about it. We'll continue with the alignment deal. Now, is there anything here I'm about to do wrong? Because I adjusted the oscillator. This this next adjustment is a detector. Is a so let's make sure the radio is tuned maximally here. I'll use the radio tuning knob. Ooh, so it was a little bit off. Okay. And we're going to try.
try to adjust this. Nice and stable now. Okay, we'll go down first. That seems to be getting weaker. Okay, it's a little hard to say because it's jumping around a bit. I'll go up. Oh, there we go, past it, back down. Oh, too far. So what I'm trying to do with this thing is, is twist it uh, back and forth, like rotate it a bit so it moves easier. There we are. Okay, so it did need a little bit of adjustment, but I'm not going to bother locking it down. Oh, yeah, oh my gosh, it all. Wait a minute, what did that say? It didn't say 73. That, that's okay. That is fine. That is fine. Just, just, yeah, okay. Well, sorry, I forgot to flip the camera again. Made you look at the, at nothing. While I worked that control up and down and watched this meter, which went, I'm sorry, I mean, you missed this. It went from here up to here. So there's definite, definite improvement there. Okay, next thing on this band is C8, the antenna adjustment. Okay, can you make sure the radio is tuned in really well? C8, C8, there's C8. Okay, it's another one, it's another one of these types of capacitors here just in behind those green antenna wires. It's probably locked down. Let's check. Let's see if I can rotate it. No. Okay, so we got to do this same thing with this one. Looks to me like I got to pull the antenna out to do it. Let's turn this set off. I just realized I did the last alignment with the uh, dim bulbs still in the circuit, but my experience quite consistently is these radios are insensitive to variations in the uh, line voltage and you know if they weren't you 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 really wouldn't get anywhere with a radio like this because the line voltage going up and down especially back in the 50s 1940s and 50s okay that came off pretty easy So if, you, if you, a radio came out of your factory and it was sensitive to the supply voltage, um, you wouldn't sell many of them and you'd, you'd ruin your reputation. So I think they designed these and it may not be that difficult. So that that can't happen. Okay, now i got to get in here, something like this, and try to... back where it was. Slide it back a bit. Okay, I can work it. Okay. Power back on. This time we'll put it on full. so loud. My, uh, my meter's pinned right over there. What, what's happened? <laughs> I just I hate it when stuff like this happens. I mean, it seems like the radio's working better and better, but, but what happened to it to make it do that? Okay, we we'll tune it right in. meter okay we'll 
try pulling up first. I'm watching the meter. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's great. Not going down. Okay, pushing it down. It just gets more and more. I'm almost to the limit here. the limit. So one of these adjustments uh, reaches its limit. That, uh, that, that, that disturbs me a lot. And I think, well, there's got to be something else going on in the radio that's not be any too easy to find, I don't think. Oh, where did it just jump down? What happened there? It's another thing I don't like. here suddenly. Let's carry on. Now, the first time you do an alignment is almost always a write-off anyway because things happen. So we're down to, we just did C8, the antenna. Well, it's just possible that C8's been adjusted way to its limit because I have a a baloney antenna on here. I mean, I'm using a signal generator. I haven't bothered with the uh, resistor here on the theory that it's taken care of by this box right over here. Maybe that theory is wrong. Maybe I need to put a resistor in there. Why don't we try that and just see what happens? Because this is the antenna adjustment and that might have a bearing. Okay, I'm going to find myself a resistor and set that up. Okay, let's see what this does. This is my 300 ohm, 3, 380 or something. It's not quite 300 ohms. Let's put this in. First, tune the radio here. Okay, so I'm watching the meter. It's peak right at the zero, zero mark. Pop this off. <laughs> a lot of AVC action going on here. I think I have, you know, I keep commenting the output's high. And I'm leaving it high because I can hear some noise, but maybe that's a bad, that's a bad move there. Okay, so did anything funny happen? Let me watch again. I didn't even watch. I'm watching the meter there. Just threw it around there. It does change it. Okay, let's try tuning that thing again. I'm going to learn a lesson here. Okay, hopefully I pull it up and it gets better. Going up, going up. It's not getting any better. Not going, not going up very much here. Let me see if I can loosen this a little more. Oh, it's as loose as can be. Just need to muscle it up. Okay, here we go. No, it's going down. It's not going up. Back down you go. Well, let's turn down the signal strength. out about a hundred times four about four hundred microvolts. Where is it? Mm -hmm. 
I've turned off the uh, modulation there, that's all. tell it's there anymore. So that's 10 times 4, that's about 40 microvolts. And that's 400. And you can see it silence it. So that's now 100 microvolts. Still there. Well, you know, the real test is hooking it up to a, a real antenna and checking it. So from here, the next band is band B. C. 37. Let's just see what trouble we're going to get into with that. C37. There's C37 on the side of the radio down here. That's an easy one. So we'll do this band too. Okay, next band. Hitting hard. And that away. Let's calibrate the camera pointer. Zero, camera is moved over. Camera should normally be above there. Looks like it's just a touch off. Make sure. Okay, the place we want this to go to do band B is 149 degrees. was. Radio got pretty quiet. Um, make my positive check on the band setting here before I get myself fooled. Don't forget to change that. Back we are now on B, B band. B band. I wonder why they didn't give it a, uh, a meter number. Why they call it B. So 6.1 megacycles is where we're at. Okay. Let's see. 6.1 megacycles. Eh? no modulation here. So the reason there's no modulation is I'm starting to have trouble with that signal generator. This this meter pins over when I set this dial so the meter reads the modulation. I don't know what's going on with it. I'm sure of the modulation and I'm not sure of anything. I'll turn it up a bit because I, I can't read it anymore. So normally you're setting that to 30, but that meter is not reading modulation. It's reading RF. Uh, well, it's a hefty signal coming to the radio. Why are we not hearing it? Because it's way the heck up there. Six point four. Now that's six. So it's supposed to be six point one. If it were 6.5, I'd start thinking uh, uh, aligned on the image or something like that. Okay, let's go down. Uh, we have to go. We have to go way down. Go way down. Mm. 
no. This appears to be where it's at. Okay, well C37 is an oscillator adjustment, so we'll try and, and bring the sky in alignment here. Um, go with a small screwdriver, and it's, which one is it exactly? Got it wrong now. C37, 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 B oscillator 6100, it's at 64. And that's because we are set at a, a uh, 149 degrees. Is it really 149 degrees? Can't imagine that isn't. Let's go back. We're going to check the calibration here. Oh, this is ready to go. Right on the money. loses itself up here, doesn't it? In the background up here, you can see the pointer. You can see how far the pointer is moving. When I tune it, you get an idea of how much motion there is in it. If that's of any interest to anybody. Okay. We are ready now. Um, we cannot use the me. Oh no, we're not ready. I left it on the wrong camera again. Jim, come on. Can't really use this meter without some modulation. We can use our ears though. It's not that the modulation's not there. It's just that it's pinning my meter. The meter's just. So try to be quick about it. Um, so we're going in the, the C down here. Looking inside. See the angle of the screw? Straight up. Straight up. Okay, well, we're in there. Seems very, very sensitive. Okay, so we want this to be go down. Just listen for the quieting. That way. Okay, we'll go a fair ways. Wait, do you see the noise getting getting louder? It's getting louder and louder. The performance is coming up as, as the circuits get aligned in here. That's my story. I'll turn the volume down. That would be down. Okay, I lost track of where I was. Pretty close now, 61. just tell from the quieting. Okay, I'll turn on the modulation. Watch the meter. Ooh, what happened there? That'd be it. Spare, spare my signal generator meter. So now we have all the bands aligned except the uh, broadcast band, which I'm going to leave for tomorrow. We're going to switch to the antenna and uh, give this guy a workout and see what he can pick up. Okay, so I have an outdoor antenna connected. We'll run through each band kind of quickly and just see what we get. So 
this time of day on this band this is the B band or a 49 meter band and uh, we wouldn't expect wouldn't wouldn't normally expect to pick up anything down here let's go see start right at one end at this end. Nothing. Not, no surprise there. Next band up. 31 meter band. We're looking at 9 megahertz area. We could, we could easily pick something up here. It's, uh, it's roughly noon. Again, maybe not. Okay, we'll go up another band. 25 meter band, which is 11, 11, between 11 and 12 megacycles. Styles backwards. To me. So this is almost certainly Cuba. It could be Radio Marti though. If we find the same thing again about here, then we know it's Cuba. There it is. So that's Radio Cuba. Pick it up every day, two places. Something very weak there. Okay. Next band up. 19 meter band. Radio went kind of quiet. This is a 15 megahertz area. I'm going to just compensate with a bit of volume. And see what we get. Should get some stuff here. I shouldn't really say that. We don't really know what you're going to get. Probably Cuba again. This backwards knob would drive me nuts. And then the last thing, the last band is uh, the 6 to 13. This is really high frequency stuff. I don't think we're going to get anything. But again, you never know these days. And a couple weeks ago, the, this uh, I was picking stuff up at 17 megahertz. I would be a little bit surprised. Yeah. So the, the way they've done this band is there's actually two broadcast bands on here now. One, one down in this area and one up in this area. And the part in between, I don't know, aircraft? Who knows what it is? Oh, I know, I just stepped on the wire, did I? Is that what happened? What just happened? Yeah, I stepped on the wire. <laughs> Jerked my camera. Okay, there we are. The initial alignment. Not too impressive results, but that could be because of conditions, not because of the radio at all. And uh, what's left now is the broadcast band. And the magic eye. Why don't we take a look at the magic eye? Because I've noticed that it's... I'm going to go down to a band where we can pick up something. 
was it? Was it down here? It was uh, on the 11th. 25. I want to be on the 25. Man, here we are. Pick up that. Uh, So I'll get my close-up camera here and we'll take a look. We'll take a look. Where is that camera? I lost it. There it is. Buried. We'll take a look at the magic eye and see, see if there's any magic in it. Well, it's got a glow on. Let's dose the lights here. Oh, that's interesting. You can definitely see it. So the pie opening is to the right. Uh, the bulb is uh, rotated incorrectly. I don't see any change in it. So let's go up to the other place where we pick the station up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, so it's not responding at all, is I'm going to hit this with a strong signal. So we're up around 11, 11, 7, oh, I've turned off my signal generator. Okay, we're going to leave that. We'll leave that for later. Something to be investigated down the road. Why is the magic eye not showing any magic? It's a little weak, too. Probably the bulb itself is, or the tube itself is weak, but... Uh, there we go. Well, thanks a lot for watching uh, my my video today. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow's coming. See ya.